Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Steve Larson, and you're listening to Sales Funnel Radio. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today, and now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. What's up, guys? Hey, I'm super excited for this. I know I'm publishing a lot right now. It's because I have a lot of thoughts, especially after Fun Hacking Live. That is like throwing gas on the fire for my brain, and I love it. Hey, I am uh, very, very excited for what I want to share with you. Um, uh, I... I sat back a, a while ago and I, and I was sitting down, I was thinking through how many businesses I had tried before ever actually getting one that really started going off the ground. And, and as I, as I looked back and I started realizing it's like, it's like, I don't know, 14, 15, 16, 17. I mean, it's, it's a lot. And I was going through and I was, I was numbering all the products that I had created. I was like, wow, okay. I kind of first started with this one. Then I went to this one. This one. And I was like, wow, it's really fascinating. And to look back, I, I encourage you all to do this. I, 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 I seriously, seriously doubt, and almost bet on my life that I am not the only one who's tried a billion different products, lots of different businesses, and uh, and failed at a ton of them. Meaning uh, of this audience who listens to this. Uh, so I encourage you to go sit down and start writing those down. And, and as I was, it's kind of a neat thing to look back and realize, like, why, why did that fail? Why did that fail? Why did that fail? And one of the lessons um, that I've that I've learned um, what was tossed back into my head as as I. <laughs> You know, I've had a few people asking me a few questions lately, especially with the the, the recent program, Two Comma Club X Coaching, that uh, um, you know I'm one of the coaches for, and that uh, that ClickFunnels just released. A lot of people have been coming to me saying, "Hey, Steven, is this a good idea? Is this a good market? This is a good. Is this a good product?" Okay, well, first off, I don't. I'm not going to know your industry like you are. Okay, but I do know the models and patterns that show if it is something typically to, you know good to go into. Usually, okay, okay, and, and, and when it comes down to it, like we can teach the models, we can teach the patterns, we can teach this, and then after a while, it's guessing. You know, you just have to launch it after a while and just see if it actually sticks. But there's a lot of patterns and stuff that we can walk through to help shave off bad ideas. Anyway, I was recently talking with um, someone, and I had this this memory come to my head. Um, Back when I was, uh, back before I started using ClickFunnels and, and, and I was building funnels inside of GetResponse, <laughs> literally, uh, the, like the email provider, right? GetResponse, Autoresponder, <laughs> they have, a, they have a, a landing page software and, uh, and I was building essentially funnels on their landing page software and it was, it was terrible. <laughs> it was, it was so janky, um, and it would it, anyway. I would like sneeze, and half of it would get scrambled. It was, it was the weirdest thing. Uh, anyway, but it's all I had, and so I was I was trying to do that. Well, I it, it it's very much part of my my character that as soon as I start selling something or as soon as I've learned something and I know that could help other people, I want to go tell them about it. Say, did you know you can do this? Oh my gosh, check it out! Right, which is why I think I podcast the way I do. Um, well, anyway, uh, one of the, one of the people um, that I wanted to go present this to was a door-to-door company okay a door-to-door selling company I uh, I had already done one summer of door-to-door sales at that time and um, Vivint like Vivint Home Security they had a huge office near the place where I was living at the time uh, this was six years ago <laughs> it's quite a while ago five yeah five years ago six years ago something like that anyway so uh, I was I walked on into Vivint <laughs> and I sat down with some of the owners and that wasn't the owners of Vivint but it, it was before their massive buyout they got bought for like 2.4 billion dollars or something um, uh, for only like 75 percent of their company they still maintain 25 percent which is crazy crazy oh my gosh can you imagine that so anyways it, it it very well may have been some of the top guys because that buyout had not happened yet at the time anyway so i was chatting with them and i was telling them like hey did you know like we could it, you got these sales agents that are out there doing this and that right and these uh these these reps that are going around think about the cost of supporting a rep think about this i could build you this thing that, that, I'm, that i'm doing called a funnel and we could like totally you know and i started giving them ideas of, of basically a front end funnel super awesome and i ended up buying like door to door selling secrets or something like that and a whole bunch of other tons of urls for that i i really like the door to door sales game i think sales is one of the most prestigious um um uh i don't know 
careers ever. Um, call me biased, but I think it's true. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I was sitting there and I was telling him about it. And I was like, hey, and, and, and to be completely honest, like, I know it would work. I know it would work, right? It fits all the models, fits all the patterns. And I was like, think about that. This is like having tons of sales agents in lots of cities that you don't have to pay to support. It's all on a website. They're like, whoa, that's crazy. And, and it turned out that like, they just didn't want it. They just did not want it. Okay. And I was like, Hey, the, okay. And I was a little bit frustrated. I spent like a, a couple hours in there teaching them, pitching them, helping them realize and they're like, wow, that's amazing. Okay. Let us, let us work this up the chain a little bit and we'll get back to you on that. And I was like, you know, if you guys have ever done any sales, that basically means no. And I was like, crap. So I walked out. I was like, why didn't they see it? How come, how come they didn't get the value? Right now, I guarantee every one of us has had that experience before in some fashion. Okay, when you, you're seeing, you're looking at a customer, you're looking at somebody you know you could help. You can't help them for free because that negates that negates uh, progress rules and laws. Okay, right? Uh, for the most part, you can, you couldn't do it for free. You couldn't. Uh, uh, um, uh, a, 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 anyway, anyway, you, you could not, however, could sell them on the fact that this was something that they need. Right, that it would drastically improve their life or their business, right? And that's a frustrating thing to sit back and go through. And uh, uh, I've, I've been through that that tons of times, tons of times. And and you guys probably have as well. And I, I recently had a um, uh, someone reach out and ask the question, "Hey, you know, I'm, I've been trying to sell in this area to these people, and I just can't sell to them. I don't I don't get it. Why isn't this happening?" And I was, I had all those memories rush back into my head, and. and you know, I've had the unique experience over the last, you know, year and a half ish over, you know, over a year to coach. I, I was putting the numbers together. It's almost 900 people that I've had the honor to coach in this process. 900. Okay. You know how many offers I've got a chance to see? How many funnels? How many industries? It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay. Because before we ever launched Two Comic Club X Coaching, right? We, uh, I was the main coach. <laughs> I was the only coach. Okay. For hundred, I mean, over, well over 700 people, and then there's a ton of other people on my own as well. And um, and I was thinking through, I was thinking through all the lessons, and I was looking at the patterns, and I was like, man, this is really fascinating. It is a unique perspective to be in. How can I share some of these lessons? And like I said, someone you know reached out and they asked, like, well, is this a, how come how come people aren't buying this? And I immediately in my head was, this came to my mind. It's like, well, you did not choose a money market. Like, that's exactly what popped in my head. You did not choose a money market. They don't want what you're trying to sell. You know they need it, but they don't want it, right? And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to walk through real quick some of the criteria, the major foundational criteria that I go through before I ever start putting together an offer, before I ever start putting together a sales message, okay? Okay, you guys know, like in the past little bit here, I've gone over the core of what a funnel actually is, right? But before you even get to that stuff, man, you have got to turn around, right? And you have got to figure out if the people you're selling to even want your stuff. So let's go through a few of these items. Sound good? Okay, that's what this episode specifically is about, is I want to help you understand, like, I'm not telling you that you can't make money if you don't fit these criteria. I am telling you it is a lot easier and faster to choose a market industry, okay? A mark, uh, a money market, that's what I meant. Money market, not marketing. <laughs> Choose a money market, okay? Um, and uh, it's oh my gosh, it's just, it helps so much. And uh, and I was I was drawing out and I was doodling this stuff out and I was like, uh, yeah, these are the lessons. And you're like, you have to have this here and th- like this part over here. You know, we're talking about speed because you can make money in a lot of different ways in places where people don't want your your stuff. But I want I want to I want to tell you from my own perspective, from my own experience, selling my own stuff, right? Helping other people sell a lot of their other stuff, you know, helping, helping other people get in the two comic club, right? What I have seen these patterns be as to, uh, 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 the speed aspect to this. Okay. When we, when we talk about, right, the only two numbers we care about in a funnel is average cart value and cost to acquire, but cost to acquire is not just about money. It's also about time. Okay. And if you're your cost to acquire time wise is huge, right? I'm not saying that you can't make a whole bunch of money. I am saying that your cost to acquire is gigantic. Okay. It's, it's huge. 
So this this episode specifically, I've spent quite a bit of time, more than I usually do, brainstorming out this topic and fleshing it out and like trying to distill down for us all like more more of these these elements that help drastically decrease your average. Uh, I'm sorry, your your uh, your cost to acquire time wise. Okay, speed to get the speed up. Okay. Are you sufficiently pre-framed? <laughs> okay, cool. Let's go on. Okay. So number one, when we talk about health, wealth, and relationships, okay, the reason why, again, that we go back to those health, health, wealth, and relationships, those three markets, okay, are there other markets? I'm sure. Okay. But those are the three no-duh buying markets. Okay. Just like we talked about before, right? It, it, it's all... <laughs> A, a, a no duh product, a no duh like like an obvious thing you would go purchase, right? There's not a salesman next to a gas station. You're gonna buy gas, okay? Right? There's not a salesman next to eggs or or bread or milk in the grocery store, right? There's not, right? It's a no duh buying experience. People are just gonna go buy it. They're going to. They expect to buy it. There's not a salesman for your utility bills. They expect to purchase there. Does that make sense? The reason why health, wealth, and relationships are such powerful things is because they are areas where people expect to spend money. They expect it, right? And if you go, I expect to spend money, right? Going to the gym for health, right? I expect to spend money, right? Everyone says, like, it takes money to make money, right? Which is total crap. But like, meaning it's an expectation though, right? Relationships, people who are, are willing, they expect to spend cash, you know, if they were ever gonna go to, you know, a therapist or spend money going to a conference or, you know, even a date, right? It's gonna take some money, right? Typically, right? And so, so, these uh, those three areas that that's why like I've said in the past while while your product itself does not need to naturally fit inside those your sales message must okay but it is way easier if you choose one of those three money markets okay health wealth and relationships are three money markets okay and so that's the first filter okay does my product fit in health wealth or relationships if it does not Right. If I can, can I make the offer? If it does not, I at least at bare minimum have got to make the sales message fit in one of those three. Okay. That's the first criteria. Choose a freaking money market. Okay. It's so much easier. All right. One of the next things I want to like, was Vivint able to spend money to hire me to build a sweet funnel for them? Okay, I didn't. I didn't. I was not. I was not nearly as experienced six years ago. <laughs> but uh, um, I think that was, I think that was six years ago. Not it was at least five. Anyway, okay. Are they are, are they are they able? Oh yeah, <laughs> right. They've got cash, right? Oh yeah, right. But are they are they willing? No, or they weren't at the time. Maybe maybe if someone hears this, they'll they'll come back to me and hire me. I love that, by the way. If someone wants to reach out, <laughs> that'd be a lot of fun. I got some sweet ideas for you guys. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. You gotta find. There's a ton of people that are able to spend money. They're just not willing. You gotta find this magic combination of the two. If you don't, if you find people who are able to spend money, meaning they have it, but they're not willing, it means you're selling a need, not a want. Okay. If you're selling a need and not a want, you automatically are getting inside of an improvement-based offer. Okay. In your head, you're at least categorized that way. Okay. In their head, even if you are really are an, you know a new opportunity, you, you're already, anyway. If, if I'm if I'm talking like straight techno babble here, guys, like go read Expert Secrets again, okay? And and Innovators Dilemma and Dot Com Secrets and Growth Hacking uh, by Ryan Holiday. In fact, it was funny as I started doodling all this stuff out, and I was like, oh yeah, Growth Hacker. And I went and picked it up, and it literally says step number one. I was like, oh Ryan and I need to hang out. And he says step number one. It begins with a product market fit okay and then uh paul graham says make something people want <laughs> right that was the first thing in the, in the whole book and i was like yes that's exactly what i'm talking about stop selling freaking needs and the way that you sell a want is by selling to people who are both willing and able by choosing a money market and selling which is the third thing here to irrational buyers they have to be irrational about it they've got to be this like the psycho people the people who go and they hang out in front of the apple store before the new iphone comes out when they very well could go purchase one the very next week without spending the night in a tent in front of the store right you've got to find the irrational purchasers and if you are not selling to a category that is irrational about what they are doing right a cult basically if you're not selling those it's very hard you start selling more into the need category needs needs right improvement based offer if i'm going to go sell a need that that's an improvement based offer and what's happening is you are by default you must start selling by competing on price since they don't necessarily want it 
They at least don't want to feel like they're getting taken, so they start nickeling and dime you down. I don't know if it's worth this much. Uh, you know, bleed for me more. Bleed, you know, right? Uh, no, no, let, sacrifice for me more. And, and you end up getting clients, and you end up getting customers, and you end up getting a, a following that is not... They're there because they feel like, yeah, okay, yeah, because of all these logical reasons, I do need it. Rather than, I've got to have this, oh my gosh, get out of my way. Right, you need you you, you got to find people anyway. So number one, choose a money market. Number two, right, sell to people that are both willing and able. And then number three, sell to people who are the irrational. They they are they are ridiculous about the thing that you're you know actually selling. What's cool about this is that um, uh, one of the other categories that I start looking at is now 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 that like like you guys know I sell in the MLM space a lot. Right, right now, that's what I'm doing, and I absolutely, I, I love it. And the reason I chose it is because number one, it's in a money market, wealth. They believe they'll get wealth through the vehicle of MLM. Right, number two, they are, uh, there's a, a lot of people are not, they're willing. A lot of people are not able, though. Stereotypically, a lot of MLMers don't have a lot of money. Stereotypically, right? A lot of them, it's the first thing I ever get into. And don't lie to me, you probably have had, you've probably been in a few MLMs yourself. Okay, <laughs> we all have, right? Okay, but the category of person that I'm selling to inside of that market definitely is willing and able. And then number three, they are definitely irrational purchasers. Okay, and so I, that, those are some of the categories that I went through to choose um, that market specifically. Okay. Now the next thing I, I go through is, and I do this all the time. I I, I look through, and um, you don't necessarily need this part, but it makes it way easier if you can get this part. I like to choose a a market, a, a customer base. Okay, uh, that is that expects to pay higher ticket, right? Right. You could be in the business of selling eggs, bread, and milk. Is that high ticket? No. So the volume is going to be insane that you have to sell in order to make a lot of cash, right? I like to sell in areas where where it's expected to spend a lot of money, right? You don't go to a car shop, even a used car shop, without the expectation of spending, you know, at least several grand, right? If it's a bad used car shop, right? But like if it's a nice place or even like let's say house, right? It's, it's expected that a lot of money flows in those areas. I like to choose uh, um, those er- where, where, where they expect, yes, you know what? I will be spending a whole bunch of cash in this. And if you're like in e-commerce or you're in retail, you're, you know, I was speaking once in, in, um, in Vegas. Um, it was definitely over a year ago now, I think. And uh, anyways, I was speaking at an event, and, and I was speaking, and, and Anton Crowley, if you guys know who he is, he's, he's the man. Uh, he, he runs a company called Dropship Lifestyle that he put together. Anyways, he spoke right before I did, and uh, what was cool is he he got up and he said that uh, yeah he drop ships, but he only drop ships things that are like at least a grand for this exact principle that because people expect to pay a lot of cash in it, there's a lot of margin in there left over after he pays business costs and product costs things like that. It's the same kind of thing. Like choose. I'm not again. It's not that you have to. Okay, it's not that you have to. I'm talking about the core of your business, right? I don't expect to 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 charge five grand for a free plus shipping book offer, right? It's free. You just pay five grand for shipping, right? That, that's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about the core of the business, the middle of the value ladder area, right? The actual thing that keeps your doors open, right? Uh, uh, that slightly more mid to higher ticket area, around a grand, five hundred bucks, twenty five hundred dollars, three grand, around that area, selling stuff like that. If I know that it's already an ex- an expectation. Oh my gosh, it's so much easier, right? Because then I don't need to go break that belief. The reason it's this value is because X, Y, and Z, right? And then I got to go start selling logical. I got to tell even more stories, break even more false beliefs. Got to like it's it's, oh, it's not that you can't. It's just it's uh I'm talking about the f- low cost per acquisition time wise, right? Time wise, it's much smaller. It's gonna be a lot faster for me to actually go sell when they already expect to pay higher dollar. Anyways, I think I talked about that one maybe too much. Um, uh, um, I like to ask the question also, um, um, how, how easy does this sell? Not, not how good is the product, right? Or how good is the offer, right? That, that's good. The offer has got to be amazing as, as I've talked about many times, but if I can ask the question, how easy is this for them to purchase, right? Meaning, is it a no, again, it, this fits back into the cap. It's almost like the question you ask if you, uh, that kind of checks, you know, is it is it one of the three money markets? Is it an irrational buyers? Are they willing and able? Right? If 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 it sells easily, right? I mean, once you show a house, the actual sale part of it doesn't take. I mean, sometimes it can take a while to close. But you know what I mean? Like emotionally on their side, 
there's not tons of stuff that has to go. They expect to spend a lot of money. It sells slightly quickly. It's an expectation that the, there's you know that it's a lot of cash they're gonna have to put out. There's a, does that make sense? Anyway, um, here here's one other thing I wanted to to, to bring up with this is that um, so I was um, I think it was at a fat event. Anyway, uh, so one one of the the things that I one of the things that I um, uh, started noticing was some people would show up to the fat event and and they'd sit in the back and you know they would they, they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do still and I, and I completely get that and I'm actually going through that a little bit right now I want to figure out I'm trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up okay and uh, and what's the, what's the contribution to the world that I'm going to try and make um, uh, not well not just the marketing world but you know, the world in general, right? And then Russell's starting to ask those questions. He's, you know, he's doing, uh, you know, Operation Underground Railroad stuff. He's, he, does that make sense? He's in that phase, okay? He's in that phase. But the first thing that he did, if you look at anybody who's really been quite successful, right? Even, even, was it 2000, it was 2017 Fun Hacking Live. Jim Edwards talked about this, okay? He talked about this. He said, he said, look, the first funnel that you build is the funnel that gets you your bills paid, Right, it's just the one that that matches the amount of money you were making at your job. Right, it, it frees up, it helps buy back some of your time. The second funnel that you're building is really the one where it's like, hey, man, you pay off all your debts, you get the the house that you really wanted to, you go get the go get the toys that you want to, and then the third, the I can't remember he had categories for him and, and names for him, but then the the third funnel you really go build. You know, is, is it that typically expect that one to be the one where like you don't need the money, but it's like the ludicrous money that frees you for the rest of your life, right? And, and I think right and where you go change the world and stuff like that. And I think one of the things that people get stuck up on, and, and Simon Sinek talks about this a lot with millennials. Man, I'm I'm name dropping like crazy in this episode. <laughs> Simon 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 Sinek. If you've never heard of stuff, go look him up on YouTube's awesome. But he talks about this with millennials a lot. That one of the things that that they'll get stumbled up on is this idea that you must have impact immediately. Okay, and and yes, it's great if you can, but it's not the thing to get stuck on. Right. Rather than focusing on changing the world first, focus on changing your world first. Right. And so that's exactly what I but that, Does that make sense? Right. I'm going and and uh, it was like a year and a half ago, two years ago, I launched this funnel and it totally changed my world. Meaning we were able to to start chomping away student debt. We were able to, I mean, it's more cash than we'd ever had. Does that make sense? And it, it did a lot of stuff for our own finances to free us. Right. To do to. So that now I'm able to go do more change the world style projects. And I think sometimes people will step back and they'll go, and this is a pattern I see, you know, almost 900 people coming through, you know, coaching with me now. Like the thing that I'll see them doing is, is they're like, I need to change the world. Ah!" And then they got like this complex over it. And yes, that's great. But like, don't do that first. (laughs) You know what I mean? If you can more power to you, but if you can't don't stumble on it. You know, don't make that as a reason to not get going, right? To get your butt off the ground and doing stuff. And I feel like it's one of the areas that people will step back and be like, I'm not having an impact yet. I'm not changing the world. It's like, you are still working nine to five. (laughs) Like, focus on getting your funnel out of the ground that actually gets you out of that first, right? That empowers you, that buys back your time. So then you can later on, your second funnel, your third funnel, whatever, then you can go do the crazy massive personal freedom funnel the massive you know change the world project and so anyway maybe i should have put that in a different episode that could be a whole episode of itself but it's already it's already been a long one i can't believe it but anyways i i i just wanted to bring that up so when i'm choosing a especially if this is your first one out of the gate and you like haven't totally like blown something up yet that's fine to not have this massive impact thing first funnel hack see what see what's out there right you follow that yellow brick road as far as you can number two then you're going out and you're adding on to where the road stopped right so then you're in you're in a new opportunity right and then when you're actually making the cash then it's easier you're you're able to be more nimble anyways because you're you're not so concerned about getting a sale you're, i'm not gonna eat if i don't make the sale ah right you're not in that area you can actually step back and make decisions that will change the world rather than, I want to change the world, but oh, man, I got to eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, I feel like I blended two topics in this episode, but I just wanted to, like, the, the way I choose a market, right? Market, not product, right? Not offer, not 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 even sales message, is I, I need to find an audience first. This is how I choose an audience. Maybe I should call it that episode. I'll call this episode that. 
This is how I choose an audience, okay? I, number one, are, do they fit naturally inside of one of the three money markets, health, health relationships? Number two, are they both willing and able, right? Do they freaking want it? Or are you selling a need, right? And if not, that's fine. Rinse and repeat. Like, don't be afraid to speed. Money loves speed, right? Be fast, right? If you if you realize, oh my gosh, there's just no way I'm going to get enough volume to really make it. I'm selling something they'll need. I know it's a legitimate problem that I'm solving. Like, yes, congrats. That's awesome. But if they don't want it, you're 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 already. <laughs> that's rough. Um, anyway. Uh, number three, are you are they irrational about the way that they purchase? Are they fanatics? Right? Is there is there usually it has to do with having a lot of culture around the market that you're selling into? Um, do they expect more high ticket stuff? And and um, is it easy to sell? Okay. And then when it comes to you personally, right? That's how I choose more more of like the audience. But then you personally, as your as far as expectations in it, I make sure the person understands that that you may you may not be in like the massive level to impact the world stuff. Maybe you're just changing and impacting your own life finances and stuff like that and in, in your own family that that's great that's fine you know it's almost uh, i found a lot of people lately have like almost a complex about that i'm not having an impact it's like wait a second you, you just changed your world <laughs> and your family's world that's a huge impact are you kidding you don't focus yet anyway all right hey guys hopefully that's helpful uh, that's the way those are some of the base criteria that I run things through and uh, um, then I go out and I start choosing the sales message then I go out and I start creating the offer and then building the funnel and then rinse and repeat and going back forth like that anyway I hope that that helped I hope that that clarifies some stuff and I hope what it my, 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 my real hope is that when it comes down to your expectations on this that you give yourself a license to just change your own world first before you try and change the world and uh, it, it, uh, it'll do a a lot for you emotionally as you do that anyway hey guys thanks so much appreciate it and hopefully you guys enjoy this episode i would love it i love going uh i don't know call it ego call it uh, uh motivation for me to keep doing this i probably will anyway but i love love seeing the reviews if you guys would mind i would love to have you guys go over and leave a review for me in itunes uh, i would just it, it really it, it means the world to me um to see that uh helps like crazy we're getting about 500 downloads a day right now and uh it's been a ton of fun so thank you guys so much thanks for being a listener and i'll talk to you later hey thanks for listening the most common question i get is steve will you look at my funnel of course whether you want me to coach you, give some hand-holding and guidance during your funnel build, or simply review the one you have, head over to coachmesteve.com and book your session now. 